Uh, my name is Missionary Peter Kim from New Jersey. Uh, thank God for giving me this opportunity to share, to proclaim the word of God here with our own uh, UBF co-workers. The title of today's message is this, uh, Jesus is High Priest Forever. Amen. Amen. Let us read the key verse, it's chapter 7, verse 25. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Uh, let me pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your son Jesus. Uh, through his sacrifice and his death on the cross, we are saved. Jesus is our high priest forever. So in Jesus, we have new life. In Jesus, we have new covenant. And also in, in Jesus, we have hope, the living hope in God's kingdom. And also in Jesus, we have new life, new identity to live as a kingdom of priest and holy nation. This time, Father, pour out your spirit upon us to speak the word of truth by faith. You may open each one's, our heart, to hear the word of God. I pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Thank you for inviting me to this wonderful Hebrews Bible study last Friday and Saturday. I was much moved by uh, each presentation prepared thoroughly and, prepa uh, thoroughly and prayerfully uh, with, through our missionaries and shepherds. Especially by their personal applications, I was, their application touches my heart because I can relate myself to them. For this message preparation, also I got much help from Missionary Monica's presentation. Thank you. But now I understand why it is called Master's Course. It was really deep and thorough Bible studies. I thank God for especially young masters, Ezra, Daniel, Rebecca, Andrea. Wow. God may bless these young Bible masters to grow to be a kingdom of priests and holy nation for their next generation. Amen. This is a fourth lecture among seven uh, Hebrews Bible studies. In previous chapters, author has declared that Jesus is the high priest, the merciful and faithful high priest, the great high priest. However, to the Jews, Jewish people, it was unthinkable things. It was against their most important and sacred tradition, the priesthood. According to the Levitical law, Jesus could not be a priest because he was not from the tribe of Levites nor descendants of Aaron. Jesus is high priest. To the Jewish people, this message is a truly revolutionary message that will change their life upside down. It will make the Day of Atonement, one of the sacred day of year, absolute. It will make such massive and marvelous temple building useless. It will make their regulations and traditions outdated. So many Jewish believers were stumbling on the truth. So to help these people, in chapter 7 and 8, the author logically proved that Jesus is the high priest based on the facts from the Bible. Moreover, he teaches the superiority of the ministry of Jesus' priesthood over the Levitical one. Finally, he challenged them to make a decision of faith. Through these Bible studies, we may accept the truth that Jesus is high priest forever. We 
have such high priest, Jesus, who is able to save us completely, who guarantee new covenants with better promises, the word of God may break down the stronghold of sin, such as pride, self-righteousness, hypocrisy, doubt, unbelief, so that we may experience Jesus' saving power that forgives all our sins completely, perfectly, forever. We may put down our old self, sinful identity, but live with a new identity as a kingdom of priest and holy nation. Part 1. Jesus is high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Look at verses 1 through 10. The author first introduced the mysterious priest, Melchizedek, to introduce Jesus' priesthood. Based on the first encounter of him in Genesis chapter 14, the author proves that Jesus is high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Then, who is Melchizedek? Do you know anything about him? Hmm? He was not an imaginary person, but he was a real and historical person recorded in the Bible. First of all, he was a king and a priest of God Most High. Look at verses 1 and 2. He was king of Shalom, which means king of peace. His name, Melchizedek, means king of righteousness. And he was also priest of God Most High. So he was the first priest at the, at, at the on the earth mentioned in the Bible. No one served both role as king and priest at the same time but Melchizedek here. Secondly, Melchizedek remains a priest forever. Look at verse 3. Let us read verse 3, if you can. Let's go. It doesn't mean that he was a supernatural being, but it means that we cannot trace his human origins because there was no genealogy of Melchizedek. Since priests in Aaron's family succeeded upon the death of prior priest, marking the day of each death extremely important. However, Melchizedek had no record of his beginning. It means he became a high priest of God Most High, not by heritage, but by God's authority. God appointed him. And he had no record of his death, as if he never died, and he is declared to be living. So he remains a priest forever. Since these facts are from the Bible, no one can deny the fact that Melchizedek, it is, he is high priest of God Most High. Then look at verses 4 through 10. Here, author emphasizes his, that Melchizedek was greater than Abraham and by extension greater than Levites, a descendant of Abraham. To the Hebrew people, it was shocking that anyone would be greater than Abraham who was the father of nation Israel. But the author brought facts to prove that Melchizedek is greater than Abraham. The first fact is that great uh, patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth. It means that Abraham acknowledged him as honored and honored him as God's servant. Another fact is that as the greater person always blesses the lesser per less, less person, Melchizedek blessed Abraham. Based on these facts, Melchizedek was greater than Abraham and thus greater than Abraham's great grandson Levi. 
And why did the author tell us about Melchizedek's priesthood and his greatness over Abraham and Levite? In those days, Jewish people believed that there was only one priesthood, the Levitical priesthood established by the law. However, here, author wants them to know that there was another priesthood, Melchizedek's priesthood, which is greater and even superior than Leviticus 1. So here, author established undeniable ground to prove his argument that Jesus is the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Then how does Jesus' priesthood relate to Melchizedek's priesthood? Look at verses 11 through 17. First of all, the author mentioned that there was a need for new priesthood because Levitical priesthood cannot obtain perfection. Look at verse 11. Here we need to know the meaning of perfection. It refers to complete reconciliation with God and complete satisfaction of God's holiness and righteousness. So when we become perfect, faultless, flawless, then we can access to God who is holy and perfect. In other words, perfection refers to our salvation. So this perfection is what we hope for, and it is what we really need and want. However, through Leviticus priesthood, with animal sacrifice, no one was able to obtain this for perfection. If new priesthood comes from this Levitical one, still he would be under the power of, uh, under the law. So he was not able to obtain the perfection. Therefore, new priesthood must, uh, which, uh, the new priesthood which make us perfect should come or be established not on the basis of the law, but some other way. So, when it was time for new priesthood to come, now God sent his son, Jesus, to be the holy priest. In what respect is Jesus' priesthood is in order of the Melchizedek? As Melchizedek was king and a priest at the same time, Jesus was also the king of peace and king of righteousness, and also he was priest. Look at verses 16 and 17. As God appointed Melchizedek, God appointed Jesus as a priest with his oath. In verse 16, God declared, you are the priest forever. He had become high priest, not on the basis of regulation, but on the basis of the power of his resurrection from the dead. Since he was raised from the dead, he, re he, re uh, he remains a priest forever, just like Melchizedek. As a result, he was the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. The author said in verse 3 that Melchizedek resembles the Son of God, not the other way. It actually gives full glory and honor to the Son of God whom Melchizedek resembled. So in fact, Jesus is far greater than Melchizedek who was greater than Abraham and Levites. So it disproves that Jesus is the high priest, divinely appointed by God, and he remains a priest forever on the basis of his resurrection power. So now, no one can raise any objection to this argument that Jesus is the high priest. Can you? Amen. Amen. 